Uh, always great to have him, of course, uh, with the uh, Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade. What does it mean for women in the workplace as far as pregnancy is concerned? Well, that's where I turned to my friend John Bell of the Bell Law Group, bellg.com, plumbing attorney, extraordinaire, job expert, founder of the group. Been a while. Good to have him back. Sir, how are you? I'm doing good, Jay. I'm doing good. It's great to be back on, and uh, thank you again for having me. A, a, lot, a lot of things happening at the Bell Law Group. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you heard about you know, my wife and, and law partner, uh, she's now accepted a position with uh, the police commissioner, uh, Keyshawn Sewell, and she's working hand-in-hand with Keyshawn trying to clean up New York City. Uh, my wife used to work with Keyshawn in the Nassau County Police Department, and when she was selected by Eric Adams, uh, she needed an attorney, and of all people, she selected my wife there. So uh, they have a lot to do, a lot on their hands, and they're doing their best to clean up New York City, but very, very proud of her. Uh, and, t- and taking a temporary leave of absence from my firm and uh, doing what's necessary to clean up New York City. All the help they can get uh, with crime up, uh, what is it, 31% over the last year, June to June. My goodness. Uh, a tall task, but hopefully Mrs. Bell uh, will assist and try to do uh, yeoman's work because they need it. Uh, good luck yeah, with that. For, Congratulations, for, for, my friend. Um, yeah, fortunately the fortunately the motors are down, which is a good sign. But they gotta they gotta deal with the crime. I mean, at the end of the day, the police officers they could arrest the people, but if they keep on getting let out, well, that's the thing. Officers, My goodness, be the, the latest story of a you know guy working at a bodega. I mean, we'll get. I'm going to get into that later. A prime example of uh, the defense attorneys, these DAs that have to go. Uh, talking about Alvin Bragg, but that's a whole another another story. Um, with you, you know, pregnancy discrimination laws, we know they continue to protect employees from reproductive health-related discrimination harassment in the workplace. Talking Dobbs versus Jackson, the Women's Health Organization, which really uh, overturned uh, Roe v. Wade, John, uh, that could have some massive effects regarding the workforce there. Talk to me about that for a second. Yeah, so it's very interesting uh, as to how this may play out. I mean, when you're dealing with pregnancy discrimination, the Pregnancy Discrimination Act in Title VII, it generally covers pregnancy as it relates to abortions as well. In other words, an employer cannot terminate an employee because of their decision to get an abortion. And that's pretty much been established law in, in federal district court as well as the uh, EEOC uh, supports that theory. However, now with the recent Supreme Court decision, I imagine that this is going to be challenged. Now, now, you know, this is this is a federal law. Fortunately, New York State has its own human rights laws and New York City human rights laws that covers uh, pregnancy and abortion and things of that, that nature. But there are plenty of states that don't have local laws. So the question in the near future is is going to be whether or not uh, an employee who decides to get an abortion can an employer terminate that employee and claim their religious beliefs? And then the Supreme Court may come forward with a new decision saying abortion is no longer covered by the Pregnancy Discrimination Act. So it's very, very interesting. we got to see what happens and develop. Uh, no question about it. And, you know, what happens on the federal level and states kind of operate their own way, that's going to play uh, kind of a massive uh, factor uh, regarding all of this stuff, uh, is it kind of a wait and see approach? Do you think, as far as uh, these uh, employers, how of how they handle their own situations? I mean, right off, uh, right off the bat, what do we do, what do we expect? What do we project here? So you're right; it is a wait and see approach. But I guarantee, Jay, within the next year, it's going to be challenged. There's going to be a situation where. An employee crosses state lines to get an abortion, could be for her health or some other reason. The employer then terminates that employee and claims, number one, abortion is not uh, covered, and number two, it's actually illegal in our state. You know, this employee did something illegal, and when an employee does something illegal, even outside of work, an employer certainly has a right to terminate. So I do anticipate this to be a hot topic, uh, certainly within the next year. The Dobbs case, um, 
it really didn't touch on discrimination regarding employment, but it did say, you know, that a, a state's regulation of abortion is uh, is not a sex-based classification and maybe, you know, not subject to the scrutinization that applies to all these types of classifications there. So, you know, there's kind of a fine line drawn here, no? And, and that's the key. You just hit the nail on the head. When, when, when they said that it's not a sex-based classification, that has major implications in employment discrimination law because abortion uh, and pregnancy discrimination falls under the subsection of sex, the protection of your gender, your sex male, female, and if they're claiming abortion is now not covered under that sex classification, that leaves the door open and basically, in, in, in my mind, is hinting that once uh, an employer uh, um, terminates an employee for getting the abortion, the Supreme Court is, going, is, is not going to reverse that decision. Yeah, John Bell with us. Uh, this is an interesting topic. You know, you you kind of delve into how the Supreme Court has handled things, and they have yet not indicated anything, at least I don't think, on the question of whether pregnancy discrimination, uh, John, actually uh, includes that of abortion. But all it would take is just one case highlighted in the high court uh, to really kind of evaporate that precedent, you know? Yeah, and, and that's and that's exactly what we saw in Dobbs. And that's exactly what we've seen in some other recent rulings by the Supreme Court. You know, you find that uh, precedent through the years is not going to be disturbed, but uh, obviously that's not the case. Now, fortunately, like I said before, New York State, New York City, we have our protections. We could always bring actions in state court, and, and, and we have good protections here, strong protections here. But, you know, then again, we, there's always a concern federally. You want those additional protections as well. You want to have the rights to bring in a federal court. And just because we live in New York State, we certainly are worried about our, our neighboring states in, in this country. And it's, it's really uh, can open up a lot of doors here, uh, without question. Um, you know, you look at a lot of things here, and especially um, the Americans with Disabilities Act, which prohibits discrimination in the workplace against people with disabilities, requires an employer to provide reasonable accommodations uh, to workers and job applicants with a disability. Uh, But it also provides some protections related to reproductive health. I mean, when you think about it, pregnancy, tell me if I'm wrong here, pregnancy alone is not considered a disability under the ADA unless, you know, someone might be experiencing complications involved there. That's a whole other area, right? That's correct. So, so someone who is pregnant uh, can't just uh, request a reasonable accommodation, and the employer doesn't have the uh, requirement under the law to grant that requested accommodation unless there's some complications in the pregnancy. When you have complications in your pregnancy, not only are you covered by the Pregnancy Discrimination Act, but you are now covered by the Americans with Disability Act, and like I said, also local New York State and New York City laws, where there can be reasonable accommodations, and now you have some additional uh, uh, protections there. Now, going back to the abortion issue, if there are complica- you know, if there are complications with the abortion, uh, arguably now you could be protected under the Americans with Disability Act. So potentially you could bring a claim, but I, I, I just don't see much support from the Supreme Court with respect to these abortion issues. And if they're going to reclassify you as covered under the Americans with Disability Act, there's yeah. going to be a, a lot of questions coming up, Jay, uh, on this topic of employment discrimination uh, in the workplace as far as the federal laws are concerned. Yeah, this uh, folks, you know, this country has the highest maternal mortality rate among developed countries, uh, which is really, you know, kind of an undersupply of maternity care providers, low access to postpartum care if you read on here and this is all according to the commonwealth fund it's a private health care foundation so uh there are alarming statistics and uh, fascinating again uh with employers i mean it's you know what the bottom line is uh, you just have this notion that employers uh you know they they can't just sit on their hands here when they want their workforce 
to risk their health by working in states when, where if, if somebody needs emergency care, that they uh, that care may be very well not be available. You know, uh, especially if the consequences are dire. You know, life and death that might be in play with a particular individual there. So uh, there is a lot going on with employers regarding this, you know. Um, sure. There are a lot of avenues to go on here. Final thoughts, sir. Yeah, I mean, you know, what I could tell you is that what employers are going to face now is generally uh, where you have employees who normally would get a, an abortion if, their health, if the mother's health are at risk are now going to be forced to go ahead and continue on with the pregnancy and, and, and have these types of disabilities that are covered under the Americans with Disabilities Act. So the employers have to become more well-versed on the law as to accommodations, time off, and they're going to have to deal with these, these, these legal, legal issues uh, of accommodations. We're going to see that more and more. So uh, they need to be more well-versed in the law as to what accommodations they're required to provide. John, great topic. John Bell, ladies and gentlemen. LLG.com, uh, employment attorney, job expert, and the founder of the Great Bell Law Group. Great stuff, my friend. Uh, and uh, congratulations uh, again on uh, on the wife's move uh, into the NYPD. Hopefully, hopefully, a key component to turning it all around. Jay, it's great to be on again, and I'm uh, looking forward to speaking to you soon. 